This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip to tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at some of the UDFAs that, Baltimore, that the Baltimore Ravens signed over the past couple of days since the NFL draft. Now, I haven't had a chance to take a look at all of them. They signed a, a good many of them. But I picked out about seven guys that you know I, I thought interesting just by looking at the list. Didn't know much about any of them, but I just say, hey, I picked out these seven guys and their positions. Let me take a look at some of these guys. I saw a long snapper on there. Was I going to look at take on, tape on a long snapper? Heck to the no. But I picked out these seven guys, and let's kind of get into it and talk about it a little bit. And these are the seven guys I picked out. Welcome to Sip the Tally Films. I'm, ho I'm your host, Coach Evans. Let's get started. So one of the Ravens' UDFAs they picked up was Jamon Franklin from Duke. And you see his measurables and stuff on the screen right here. And so talk, talking a little bit about Franklin, I watched his uh, game versus Florida State. And um, wasn't very much there. Uh, played a lot of three technique, played a lot of one technique. And um, a lot of cardio going on. He was able to, you know, occupy the guard and the center and you know made it i don't want to say made it tough on the guard and center to get the second level but he occupied them enough and florida state still kind of did what they wanted to do um offensively and um when i went just to go check numbers and see he's really just a a body i think it's gonna be a long shot for him to make the team especially with the depth we got at interior uh, defensive line, Matt BK, uh, Travis, and, and those other boys. Um, this is going to be tough for him to make the team. There's an outside shot he make it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, like I said about, you know, one of my little cousins that got a chance with the Colts. Um, it's a long shot, but he got a shot. And so um, that's really what I got to say about Franklin. It's going to be tough to see if he makes the team, but um, he has a chance. Right, let's move on to our second UDFA. Next up, Tramel Walthall, senior, UGA, from Hinesville, Georgia, 6'3", um, and 2'8", 278 uh, pounds, and the Beast from Dane Brugger, he was listed as the number 53 edge, and um, I watched his game versus, who was that, versus Missouri. Now, and I watched that game because they had a prospect that a lot of people had tackled, that a lot of people felt good about. And so I wanted to see how well he did versus that guy. And um, he was he was getting hooked a lot. Came off the ball okay. Didn't get a lot of penetration. Didn't get, didn't, you know, wasn't really setting the edge. And he was a, he's, played a backup role at, at UGA anyway so the chances of of Tramiel really making the team are s slim anyway so again he has a shot even though it's a long shot he has the measurables though 6'3 you know and 2'8 273 pounds has a chance but definitely a long shot to make the team and um, you can go back and check out Tramiel's um you know, tape if you want to, but it's just going to be tough for him to make the, the team, you know, with the, the edge guys we got, especially with the young guys we got. You really got to get them a chance to make the team and also drafting the edge guy from Penn State as well. So next up, the third UDFA I want to talk about is Joe Evans, defensive end, edge from Iowa, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hometown of, hometown of Ames, Iowa. He's a senior, 6'2", 252. Uh, position ranking on Dane Brugler's The Beast, he was not ranked. He was nowhere to be found in the edge rankings um, in Dane Brugler's The Beast. So, um, when I looked at his stats on PFF and saw that he had 10 sacks this season, and so, you know, I wanted to see which games that he showed out in. 
So, you know, looking at the stats, I saw that he had four sacks versus Tennessee. And I'm like, oh, snap, SEC competition. So let me go see what, what Joe's all about. So um, in my when my little vault, and I realized I had I got all the Iowa games, cool. And probably I got all the Iowa games because of Cooper DeGene. But um, I did not have the Tennessee game. So I was like, I want to see. I got to go find this Tennessee game. So I, I actually went to YouTube to see the highlights. And in the highlight package, they did have all the sacks from the Tennessee game. But then when I quickly realized that Tennessee had opt-outs and those sacks were not against the, the real start of a Tennessee, and he really abused that guy for Tennessee. So my next thing was, well, let me go see what he did against the champs. So I watched him versus Michigan. And um, let's just say they, they really erased Joe Evans and he didn't do anything that's worthy of even really talking about other than hold the edge on some run plays. Didn't, you know, didn't really get any pressure. Uh, wasn't really much of a factor other than being a, a defensive end and being out there. And I know Michigan did that to a lot of people, but the thing is, this is the NFL now. And so I'm going to go see if you at least made one or two plays versus the top competition. And I didn't find that in my tape um, watching the Wolverines now. And the reason I was excited to go see Joe Evans, because when we were on uh, yesterday with my call in show that was kind of botched up a little bit and the Ravens roundup, people kept mentioning Joe Evans, Joe Evans, Joe Evans. And me and Chris just joking was wondering who the F is Joe Evans. And so I went to go do research on him, man. Again, Joe Evans is another one with a shot. But it's a long shot because we got edge. And now we'll say this about Joe. Joe's what is one of those guys that's a try hard, high motor guy. Now, I think his athletic ability is limited, but just when you when you get in your mind as a tackle or whoever's trying to block him that, hey, he 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 don't have athletic ability, I'm better than him, that's when he's gonna whoop your butt. Because he's not going to stop. He's going to come every play as hard as he can every play, and that's going to give him an edge in camp. If he doesn't make it, it's going to be because there are six guys or whatever that's better than him, and they play hard, harder than him every snap. But he's going to play hard every practice snap, every game rep he gets. There's not going to be any of that, that brother-in-law soft stuff. This kid is going to go hard every play. I know this type. He he know his he know he don't have much of a chance. He he gonna try to bust your head every play, every rep he get. And if he makes it, he's gonna be a special teams demon. If he makes it, and that's Joe Evans. Next up, uh, UDFA number four for the Baltimore Ravens is Yvandy Rigby. Now his hometown says Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. But he's actually from Turks and Caicos. Moved here and started playing football later on in his teen years and uh, earned a scholarship and, and played a little football at Temple uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, age, he's 24 years old, six foot, um, a little over six foot, uh, 239 pounds. And in Dane Brugler, he was the 32nd ranked linebacker in the Beast. Now, uh, Yvandi Rigby is a pretty good football player. Um, he's just going to be caught up in the wash with what we have at linebacker. When you think about the depth, he has an opportunity to beat out Josh Ross and maybe make the practice squad and maybe be a special teams guy. Rigby does a good job of um, stacking and shedding. He does a good job of taking on offensive lineman with his hands and not allowing allowing them to just cover him up and just stay blocked he is a fairly good athlete a uh, good size good strength good lower body strength so if there's a guy that i'm rooting for that's not supposed to make the team it, it's rigby uh linebacker from temple six foot a little over six foot, 239 pounds. Uh, that's your Vandy Rigby from Temple. So as of right now, one of my few dark horses, this will be the guy. This will be the guy. Let's move on to the next. Corey Book from Akoki, Maryland. And I apologize if I butchered that because I know that's not correct. Charge it to my head, not my heart. 
senior from Maryland, uh, position ranking. He was the 76 rated guard, and Dane Brugler's the beast, 6'2 and 6'8, um, 308 pounds. And when doing research on, on Corey, um, you know, I found games he played in and whatnot. So I got some tape of him um, in the Penn State game. So I was watching the Penn State game and realizing that, you know, he didn't start. So I got to the end and finally got to see some reps some of him run blocking and whatnot. And he was he was okay or whatever. And so I went to go pull some st- st- statistical stuff on Corey. Corey didn't have a pass blocking rep all year long. Corey got into the games toward the end and uh, or just when he, he didn't have a pass blocking rep all year long. <laughs> just put it like that and you do with the information as you will. So the 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 odds of him making this squad I think are slim to none. Now keep in mind this list has numbers on it, but this the numbers mean nothing. That's just how I was pulling them off the list that I found. So these these numbers don't mean like number one was the best guy, number two is the best guy, or Corey's the number five guy. This just I was just pulling them off the list and I was decided to give them a number. Um so you know, like I was saying with other guys, you know, some of them have a chance, even though it's a slim chance. I think his chances are slim and none because like I said, I'm looking, I'm right here now. I'm staring at his PFF sheet and there's not a pass blocking rep on there. It's a hundred percent all run. 266 reps of all run. You take with that information as you will. Let's go to the next. Next up, number six. Well, number two. Bo Braid, safety, University of Maryland. Why was this dude not drafted? I, somebody make it make sense to me. Let's, let's, Clarksville, Maryland is hometown. Age 22, senior at University of Maryland. Six feet, 203 pounds. He was the number 12th ranked safety in Dane Brugler's The Beast. A lot of other guys up under him got drafted, including by the Baltimore Ravens. I don't understand why this guy was not drafted, and I'm going to tell you why I say what I say. So, again, when I go to try to find film on these young fellas, I try to find their best game and also, or I try and or I try to find their best competition. I had the Michigan game for uh, Mr. Braid. We all know Michigan was the champs. This young fella was all over the place making plays. All over the place making plays versus the champs. The best competition in CFP. This kid was all over the place. In the run game, in the pass game, his footprint is all over the Michigan game for the University of Maryland. The best team in college football, this young fella put his stamp on it. Now, they didn't win the game. But they left that game knowing who Bo Brady is, or Brady, whichever, however you say it. Bo Brady or Bo Brady, whichever, however you say it. This dude right here, I think uh, Kane, so, so, however, however you say our numbers, our seventh uh, pick, our last pick, our seventh round pick, our ninth pick, our last pick in the draft. This dude going to push him probably out the door. This cat right here is a player. This is the UDFA that's probably going to make the team. This is the guy right here. uh, OTR Mike talked about it Monday. This is probably the guy that's going to make the team right here. Keep your eye on Bo Brady or Bo Bray, however you say it. Got one more left that I'm going to do today. All right, and the last UDFA for today is Dayton Wade. <clears throat> Wide receiver from Ole Miss, hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. Senior coming in at 5'9", 2'8". Uh, one-fourth for us that are mathematically inclined. I don't know why the combine does the eighth number. Just 
Reduce that stuff. One fourth. God dog it. <laughs> 176 pounds. And uh, Dan Brugler is the beast. He was the number 53 ranked wide receiver. Now, what I got when I watched um, Dayton Wade, and I watched a couple games because I like wide receiver play. Um, if it was not for the signing of Hardy, Wade would probably have an opportunity to make the team. Starting off as a kick returner and then maybe making his way into some kind of gadget play because he's a smaller guy, you know, being 5'9", 176. But for Ole Miss, he played outside. He was an outside receiver. Uh, jump balls, he went and got them. Running past people, he went and got them. He was not actually do a lot as far as route tree because they had a system and you – you know, you run certain routes, and if the defense gave you this, the quarterback did that. If the def- if the, qu- the defense gave you that, the quarterback did this. Kind of like Tennessee. When they had the fast receiver uh, last year that got drafted by the Giants, uh, Hyatt, Jalen Hyatt. So he has the ability to play. I think if and when we cut him, and he may stick on the practice squad. He may stick on the practice squad because he has he has some ability. But if we cut him, I think somebody else is going to pick him up. I think he has the ability to stick and stay with somebody on a practice squad for a year, maybe two, and then find his way onto a roster and maybe have a five- or six-year career. I really like D-Wade, Dayton Wade. I don't know if he'll have a space in our, on our team, but possibly he could. He could, he could battle Tylen Wallace for a spot, for a special team spot. He could. He really could. But um, these are the seven guys I decided to pick uh, for UDFAs, and I think the one that's really going to make the team is Bo Brady. I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's the front runner for the UDFA of the year to make of this year to make the team. He played a great game versus Michigan. He has great tape versus other guys. Why he was not drafted, I do not know. I don't know if he has medical issues or some stuff in his background or he didn't interview well, but his tape says he should have been drafted. So I'm going to go ahead and put my $2 bet out there saying if a UDFA makes the team, it's going to be Bo Brady. Unless he just straight up slap a coach or something. So I appreciate you guys for coming out. This is Coach Evans. You could have been anywhere in the world. But you chose to be here with me. And this is my take on some of the UDFAs. It's too many of them for me to watch tape on. And I just can't get to all of them. But I picked out seven of them. And um, you take with this information and do what you will. Like, comment, subscribe. And if there's any one in particular free agent UDFA out there that you want me to take a look at, drop it down in the comment section and I may give it a look, man. I appreciate you guys and enjoy the rest of your night. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love. Thank <laughs> you.